Hi everyone, my name is Nilis Zinis and I'm a market manager here at Unchain Labs. I will be your moderator and thanks to everyone joining us today. We will have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. To ask questions, all you have to do is click on the Q&A in your Zoom navigation bar at the top or at the bottom of your screen and type in your question. When submitting a question, please avoid clicking the anon anonymous button so we can reach out through email if you aren't able to get to your question. But of course, we'll get to as many of them as we can. And now I'm very happy to introduce to you Alex Kerr. He's our Senior Application Scientist for LNP Solutions at Unchain Labs. Today, Alex will walk us through how Stunner can help with your LNP characterization, not only particle size, PDI, and particle concentration, but also total RNA concentration, and how that really can simplify your encapsulation efficiency workflow. So now I'm very enthusiastic to hand it over to Alex and you can take it away. Thanks for the introduction, Nellis. Uh, I've actually been looking forward to talking about this for a long time. It's something that people ask about a lot when we discuss Stunner. So it's great to have the opportunity to really get into using the Stunner for RNA quantification and encapsulation efficiency, specifically in LNPs. And I think that everyone is going to agree that it's a really powerful tool in this space. So we've all worked with long, complex assays that can be absolute monsters. They often work very well, and there's often no good enough alternative, but they can still be a really big drain on your resources. I know this well, because I'm part of the team that works with our LMP formulation screening device, the sunscreen, and we regularly generate large numbers of LMPs, up to 96 at a time. And I think I've had nightmares about facing off with that rival green workload. When you have lots of samples to screen, the assays can take hours, generate lots of mess and waste, and cost significant time and money, as well as being a huge opportunity sink by getting in the way of the good stuff that you really want to be doing, which is generating new samples or digging into the data that you generate and need for a successful development project. Here's the standard story. You've got your LNP in solution. It's going to have RNA both inside the particle, unless something's gone terribly wrong, and outside the particle. The percentage of encapsulated compared to total encapsulated and free RNA is the encapsulation efficiency, so the efficiency with which RNA is trapped within the particles compared to what is wasted. In my experience, typical, typically people are asking for encapsulation efficiencies of over 85%, give or take. So people are only really interested in really efficient processes, which of course makes sense given the high cost of the actives involved here. So you then have to do two separate little assays. For the free RNA, you add your dye, which becomes fluorescent when it binds to RNA, to the intact sample. Because the dye doesn't penetrate the particle, only the unencapsulated RNA displays the fluorescence. For the total RNA, you've got to get that dye to the RNA inside the particles, so you add a surfactant, which breaks down and solubilizes the LNP, and releases that payload, allowing the dye to bind to all of the uh, RNA, and so you get a read of that full fluorescence. And what does this look like in practice? Well, what it looks like to me is a lot of pipetting. You've got to dilute your samples into the working range of the assay in this first row here. You then dilute in either plain buffer for your free RNA read, so with your intact particles, or buffer with surfactants for your total read. And both of these are typically done in duplicate. Any bubbles formed when pipetting your sub surfactant will have to be popped or you'll mess up your measurement. And each one of these conditions need, needs its own calibration curves and blanks because the surfactant has its own intrinsic fluorescence. So we've crunched the numbers and seen that it takes about 266 different pipetting events. So that's 96, even with judicious use of a multi-channel pipette. Depending on the experience and speed of the user, the assay, including an incubation step, can take easily over 45 minutes to an hour. It's then read on a plate reader and the calibration curve is used to calculate your total and your free RNA, and you can get your encapsulation efficiency out from there. Looking at encapsulation efficiency can let you know how good your lipid formulation is at entrapping your RNA, so it can help select formulations that are going to get you the most bang for your buck. So good formulation efficiency, good thing. 
However, this isn't the only part of the story. Other factors can affect your encapsulation efficiency as well. This could be the reactant buffer chosen, either the chemistry, pH, or concentration, or another part of the processing, such as the mixing conditions, flow rates, and flow ratios, or even the downstream processing. So there's a lot to keep an eye on and a lot to think about. I'd also like to highlight that there's a difference between encapsulation efficiency, which is how much RNA ends up inside the particle versus outside, and is the most commonly reported value in literature, and the yield. So one process of formulation might show a more moderate encapsulation efficiency, but might see less losses of RNA through the from the process through degradation of the RNA or particle aggregation. This can be really significant. For example, if you were comparing two formulations that have an encapsulation efficiency of say 80 compared to 90, you're gonna choose the higher of the two. However, if one of these samples then undergoes significant aggregation during dialysis and loses material in the process, you're gonna wind up with less particles and less material in your final sample. And obviously that's not optimal. So it's really important to keep track of the yield throughout the process where possible, as well as the encapsulation efficiency of the final particles when you're developing your winning formulations. And how can we make this easier? Enter Stunner. This lets you nail down your nanoparticle quality by knocking total con RNA concentration, particle concentration, size, and detection of aggregates off your list in one shot. Without skipping a beat, you'll know if your nanoparticle is good to go. Stunner is the only system on the market that pulls together UV vis concentration, rotating angle dynamic light scattering, or rattles, and multi angle light scattering on the same two microliter sample. Just load your two microliters of sample into the Stunner plate. You don't need to bother with sample prep or dilution, as the microfluidic plates allow for a coverage of a wide dynamic range. If you're dealing with a full plate, you can get 96 concentration measurements in 10 minutes, add on rattle sizing from seven different angles and have the full plate done within two hours. For even heavier workflows, you can hook it up to your favorite robot to add even more oomph. Here we can see exactly what sample loading looks like with the help of some fluorescein and a black light. In two wells, you can see we've already loaded some samples. And as you can see, to load another sample, you simply add two microliters into that input well, and the sample wicks into the plate through capillary action. So this is a super simple and quick process with a minimum of prep. It's also compatible, compatible with multi-channel pipettes for those really high throughput days. And you may think, so why doesn't everybody use UV vis for total RNA and LMPs? Cloudy and complex multi-component solutions of LMPs can really hang up other devices, but two things set Stunner apart. The super short path lengths of the two microfluidic cells on a Stunner plate for each sample means that turbidity is no trouble for Stunner. You can cut through all of that turbidity and then automatically remove the obscuring signals from your lipids and buffers and other components with the Unmix app, which lets you check out just the absorbance signal from your payload. Stunner's quantification is really crazy simple and super efficient. So Stunner can measure the total RNA in your LMP sample easily and rapidly whilst giving you particle size data. However, if you're looking at encapsulation efficiency, you will still need to run a reduced dye assay to get your free RNA value. However, there's gonna be no need to lyse your particles as the total RNA is provided by Stunner, no problem. So with that in mind, this is the plate we were looking at before. And here is the slashed assay with the LMP lysis sample section removed. So there's no need for surfactants and their potential bubble forming, no need to incubate the LMPs to let the surfactant do its work, no need for two different calibration curves and no need for multiple dilutions. Just a single dilution step in the top row here, followed by placing the samples in the relevant wells, and then a single calibration curve, and then you're good to go. So this drops your pipetting burden from 266 events just down to just 114, and you let Stunner handle the rest. 
We'll call this the hybrid assay for measuring encapsulation efficiency. What's more, Stunner is plate-based, as we mentioned, so you can let it do its thing whilst you get on with running the rest of the assay. It takes just five or so minutes of hands-on time to load a plate, and then whilst that's running, you'll have plenty of time to run your reduced dye assay. This lets you finish the whole process within 40 minutes, with less than 20 minutes of hands-on time. Let's compare this to running a full dye plate, probably, as we said earlier, 45 minutes to an hour or more for the RNA quantification, and then often measuring your samples one by one on a traditional DLS, which again could easily take over an hour with 12 samples and take significant hands-on time. Even using a plate-based DLS, the time adds up when you're adding that to running a full dye assay, and there's no other plate-based DLS for getting multiple scattering angles either. Additionally, this will help you cut down on your materials costs using half the amount of dye for 12 samples. So for our standard ribogreen assay, this would drop the amount needed to run those 12 samples from 76 microliters down to just 38 microliters. So to summarize, the stunner will let you double your throughput using half the time, half the dye, and half the standard curves. Unchained Labs is looking at speeding up workflows across the LMP development process. Sunscreen for automated microfluidic sample production, just prepare your input plates and you walk away. Whilst that's running, you can pre prepare the next set of reagents you're going to run, get your dialysis set up ready, or get your morning coffee. You can then load your samples up for pre-dialysis DLS and RNA quantification and run that plate whilst your samples are dialyzing. In the upcoming study, we use standard dialysis cassettes, but make sure to check out the big tuner for the ultimate in high throughput buffer exchange and concentration. Finally, you can analyze your samples post dialysis, maybe running the reduced dye assay at the same time, and finish the entire process off top to bottom, including encapsulation efficiency within four hours. And that's with plenty of hands off time whilst the pieces of kit are running to start the process again. So you're not just going to take our word for it with no data. So let's develop our own process. Using sunscreen, we produced 12 samples. That's two different reaction buffers. We used citrate and acetate as common examples of buffers that people use, both at pH 4 and at a 20 millimolar concentration. And that was the carrier for our poly A payload. We then used three different formulations, referred to here as X, Y, and Z. And then this was all done in duplicate. So that's our total of 12 samples. Total experimental time for these experiments was just under an hour, and they were then dialyzed against 1x PBS and analyzed on stunner. And this gave us particle size. These are the averages of the two samples done on the, sorry, these are the averages of the measurements done on the duplicate samples. And across the board, you can see the acetate buffer produced smaller particles. They were all around 80 nanometers. The particles in their entirety were all below 0.2 PDI, and generally that wasn't affected by the choice of buffer. With the sole exception of LMPZ, clearly acetate buffer seems to be the best one to use for this formulation with an 80 nanometer particle size and a PDI under 0.1 compared to a particle size of over 180 nanometers when prepared in citrate buffer. Stunner's rotational angle DLS also allows for much more accurate and consistent, consistent particle counts by being able to calculate the theoretical intensity at the zero degree scattering angle. So this is where the scattering uh, intensity is not affected by the particle size. You can see most of the measurements are similar, around nine times 10 to the 11 for all the LMPs prepared in acetate. So that makes sense because they are all run at similar concentrations and they all came out a pretty similar size. For LMPX, the particle count reflects the slight difference in particle sizes between the two buffers, with the higher particle count being reflected by the smaller particle sizes produced in the acetate buffer. And this is really accentuated in LMPZ, with the particle count being orders of magnitude higher for the smaller particles produced in acetate buffer than the much larger particles produced in citrate buffer, which you can see have a much lower particle concentration. And of course, what we're all here for, Stunner quantifies your total RNA. 
As mentioned, these first samples were reduced with polyae. Sometimes it can be a bit of a difficult material to accurately measure due to its heterogeneous size distribution. But here you can see, again, with the average of two nanoparticle nano batches, with the error bars representing the standard deviation of the two samples, we got a great match between stunner, which is highlighted in green here, and the standard ribogreen assay, which is in blue. And that's we use that because that's the most commonly used RNA quantification method for LMPs. The stunner gives excellent reproducibility across the two batches. The standard deviation for the stunner measurements were consistently lower than the dye-based assay in this case by an average of 33%. When that data is combined with the reading of free RNA, either measured via the hybrid assay or via the standard ribogreen assay, you can get that encapsulation efficiency out. The precision of both assays between the two samples in this case was excellent with a uh, minimal standard deviation for both assays. It's clear that with these formulations, generally encapsulation efficiency performance is excellent with encapsulation efficiencies all being above 97%. And this exception, unsurprisingly, perhaps, is the LMPZ prepared in citrate buffer, which was the only one that, of the samples tested that dropped below 90%. Between that and the large sizes produced with this system, the acetate buffer really seems to be giving the best performance overall. And with that in mind, we reformulated the particles with luciferase mRNA using the acetate buffer. The particle sizes were generally similar to those formed with polyA, uh, around 80 nanometers, with all PDIs again being less than 0.2. This time we measured just three samples to save on materials. And when compared with ribogreen, Stunner shows very similar results again. Stunner gave highly precise results with an average coefficient of variation or relative standard deviation of 0.7%, indicating really excellent reproducibility. And the ribogreen assay in this case gave CVs of 2.5% across the duplicate measurements that were run on the standard ribogreen plate. The encapsulation efficiencies were very similar between the two methodologies as well, with an average difference of 0.7% between the two types, the two ways of me measuring these. And for the RNA, these values were slightly lower than with poly A, ranging from 96 to 91% for each formulation. The ease of quantifying RNA with Stunner means it's easier to keep track of your playload throughout the process too. So we track the RNA concentration, starting with the stock solution. It's always good to check that you're working with what you think you are. Followed by the particles directly after formulation, pre-dialysis. So uh, we found that it's really rare for people to be running ribogreen at this stage and at the end of the process. And it's really easy to fit this measurement into your workflow whilst buffer exchange takes place. And both formulations show essentially zero loss at this point. So that's the initial point after mixing with efficiencies of around 95 to 100%. After dilution and dialysis, however, the yield for LMPY shows a loss of 20%, whereas LMPZ retains almost all of its payload. This suggests that there's some optimization to be done for LMPY in the process or formulation to improve those yields. But right now, LMPZ is definitely the most efficient process. And all of this so you can help select your winning formulations with the least work possible, freeing up your time to find the next generation of LMPs. While shrinking those assays down to size, So I believe we have time for questions now, if anyone wants to, has uh, entered that into the chat box. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Alex, for taking us through how to use Stunner and to really make the live in the lab easier for LMP characterization. Uh, we already have some great questions that have been submitted and anyone can still ask a question by entering it in the Q&A section of the Zoom navigation bar. So let's start with the first one. Uh, do you have to run a full plate at once? Um, yeah, interesting question. So the answer to that is a resounding no. You do not have to run a full plate at once. You can use as many wells as you want to complete the, the particles that you want to analyze. 
each individual well is single use, but you can run a quarter plate or a half plate, take that plate out of the device, and you can easily use the rest of the plate to run uh, your analysis of different samples. So that's really simple and helps keep costs down. Exactly. Can you dilute samples or do they have to be concentrated? Uh, you can absolutely dilute samples. I would say that with that two microliter input, it's really not necessarily necessary because you're still going to be using less material than a, a standard DLS cuvette for sure. Um, but if for whatever reason you do want to dilute your LMP, if you want to try doing it in different buffers or anything like that, yeah, yeah, you can you can definitely work at any range of concentrations. Um, as we mentioned, there's two microfluidic uh, cells in each well. So they have different path lengths, which helps us get that wide dynamic range. So it's, it's a really nifty way of, of achieving that. Exactly. Um, someone is asking, what about measuring DNA concentration? So I'm assuming DNA LMPs. Yeah, cool. There's a, there's actually two ways to deal with this. One is that the stunner has presets for measuring RNA and DNA. Um, and different lengths of RNA as well, actually, if you're doing SI RNA compared to, say, two kilobyte RNA. Um, but additionally, to increase the accuracy even more, you can actually do a custom RNA or DNA analyte and do an actual set of calibration measurements on your exact analyte to get really the, the most precise answers that will be exactly calibrated for whatever uh, material you're using. So you've got lots of options there to, to give you the best results. Okay. Can Stunner detect proteins or separate them from your RNA signal? Let's say if you have a combo sample. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, there's sort of two ways to think of this. Um, and one is uh, if you've got, say, protein contamination, if you're just measuring your RNA stock that you've produced, um, you can separate out that signal from general background noise. Um a really interesting one is being, again, being able to train uh, Stunner on your specific analyte if the, you think there's a specific protein contamination in there. And then it'll automatically subtract that spectrum from your total spectrum when you're measuring your LMPs. And so you'll be able to get just the RNA concentration out. And really excitingly, there's also an LMP. Yeah, it is exciting, Nellis. I see you smiling there. Uh, you can also get use the LMP Conjugate app where you can actually quantify two analytes at a time. So you can get both the concentration of your, your RNA, your DNA, whatever, and the concentration of another analyte it, it, that's in there. It can separate out those two spectra so you can get concentration from both. So there's some really interesting opportunities with that, which hopefully we can bring you more information on in the coming year. Okay, um, very exciting indeed. How many how many samples can you run at once? So the plate is based on a standard ninety six well plate format. Um, that's why it can be loaded by a multi channel pipette as well. Those spacings are designed to be industry standard. Um, and then it's up to you whether you want to run in duplicate or triplicate or you could run less samples and just increase the analysis you do on each individual well. That's also an option with Stunner. You're not locked into measuring it in one particular way. Um, and you can include sample blanks if you want. Obviously, that would cut into the amount of samples you run. But also blanks are saved onto the system, so that's not necessary with every single experiment you run. So 96 is the max, and then you can play around with that depending on what your individual needs are. Okay. Um, you said you can separate the lipid and buffer components from the UV spectra. Um, what would you have to do or what if you have a very UV absorbent lipid? Uh, yeah, we've run into that a few times actually uh, with customers. So we've had to do that live in, in sample workups and stuff. Um, so we've become pretty familiar with that. And uh, just like with proteins, uh, typically, you won't be using to looking to quantify that lipid. You'll just be looking to subtract that lipid from the rest of the signal. And so, again, you can train Stunner on your specific lipid. So, essentially, you run an empty lipid nanoparticle. You look at what that spectra looks like. You can do it in a few different concentrations. And then the Stunner can take that data and it can apply it to the measurement of the LMP with cargo and subtract the lipid from that signal. So you can just get your RNA out. That's it. It's a really cool thing to be able to do, actually. That's definitely true. Um, 
someone wants a bit more explanation on, on this whole hybrid essay you, you just explained. So can you go into a bit more detail on how the reduced dye essay works for free RNA and why the total RNA measurement on the stunner wouldn't require any surfactants? Sure. Okay. So that, that's broken down into two steps. Just let me <laughs> get my mind in order a little bit. So the free assay, you're just going to need to dilute your sample um, to the same degree as you do with your normal uh, ribogreen assay, or you could even dilute slightly less if you think you get slightly accurate read at slightly higher concentration. Um, so you dilute those samples, you then place those into the measurement wells, uh, and then you add your fluorescent dye. You just need one calibration curve because you're just dealing with the system without a lysis buffer. Sorry, without a lysis surfactant. Um, right, so that'll give you your free RNA. The, the fluorescent signal from those measurement wells will just be the unencapsulated RNA. So you do still need to run that one calibration curve to get out the concentration of free RNA. And, and then... to clarify on that bit, that's not on standard, right? That free yes. RNA is Sorry. Sections... You, you're correct. That is still using a standard plate reader and the dye. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry if that wasn't clear during the during the presentation itself. So you're you're still running half of a standard ribogreen assay um, with a few tips and tricks that that we will be sharing uh, to reduce the amount of petting overall as well. So you've got your free RNA from your half standard ribogreen assay, and then your total measurement is done by Stunner, and that's using UV vis, not fluorescent. So there's no need to add a dye um that needs to bind with the particle you just are using uv light source and picking up the absorbance of the rna and because uh most of the other components have a relatively low absorbance it's pretty easy for that absorbance to be preserved even though the material is inside a lipid nanoparticle that doesn't significantly change the UV, uv absorbent properties of the payload so there's no need to break down the particle to read that with uv vis like there would be for a fluorescent dye Hopefully that clarifies things. Please do get in touch and we will be releasing, uh, I believe, an SOP or a guidance document on how to run this hybrid assay. Okay, great. Um, next question. I believe we have time for one or two more. Um, can, can you measure the RNA without the LMP components? So I'm assuming before you encapsulate it in, in this case. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Stunner, again, there was so much data that was produced, even just with these 15 samples that we just didn't have time to really go into depth on. Um, but Stunner has great usage for just measuring um, for just measuring RNA or proteins individually. Um, so you can get the concentration data, you can get sizing data. And actually, uh, Stunner has a really nice RNA quality check app, I believe, which lets you look at the the dls and the uv spectra and it checks for contamination and it'll see if you've got any aggregation or, or weird folding of your rna as well so it's it's really perfect for looking just at rna for the for workflows that aren't lmps as well okay there's um someone asked to maybe shortly repeat how long does a stunner plate take to run sure so a full plate when you're doing uh, rotational angle DLS measurement, seven angles, 96 wells will take about uh, two hours. Um, often we're running sort of half plates or quarter plates. We're doing sort of 12, 24, 36 samples at a time. And so that'll be an hour, give or take. And um, so it depends on your workflow. But yes, yeah, a full plate, 96 samples with full rotational angle DLS is two hours. Okay, and let's look at a final one. Um, how was the accuracy determined for your encapsulation efficiency? Um, since it's a relative value, I think <laughs> here. Uh, so, so that was because that was just the standard deviation within the measurement. So the standard we measured in triplicate and the ribogreen, we could just use the duplicate measurements that you typically use when you're running a ribogreen plate. So that was felt to be the most representative of, of what you're doing for that. So yeah, that, the ribogreen was just duplicate and the standard was triplicate well measurements, then the, the standard deviation of those. Yeah, I, I, I think maybe... Um, the one that set ribogreen was the free and the total done on ribogreen, and the one that set stunner was free on ribogreen and total on stunner, right? 
Yes, uh, those were compared to each other, yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's correct. Exactly. Um, that brings us, unfortunately, out of time. Um, there's there's a couple of questions left that we'll definitely hand over over email. Um, so we'll reach out. If you still have other questions, please, please reach out to us um, either through the website um, www.unchainlabs.com or just over email at info at unchainlabs.com um, if you want to learn anything more about our instruments um, or just about this essay overall. Um, as you might know, we would love to connect with you and talk science. Uh, thanks again, everyone, for attending this virtual seminar. Thank you, Alex, for the great presentation and answering the questions. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you.